So here we have the default lighting uh, model that I've made in Wings 3D. It's in several components. There's this cube part, this sort of smoothed area, and these uh, faceted like crystals. And what I want to do is create the illusion that they're glowing and that they are lighting up the rest of the things in this scene, even though there's not very much in this scene. Uh, in the wireframe view, each, each of these individual crystals, they are separate bits and uh, the, the cube is one object itself and there's the infinite plane. To create this illusion then of the, of the light being emitted from these I'm going to use true ambience effect. So to get there I'm going to turn the atmosphere off and set the sky to black. Go into the sky lab and disable the sunlight and that gives us this situation. Now to get enough light out of these, well, I'll show you what the problem is. I'll select all those bits, modify the material, and turn up the ambience. I'm also going to set the diffuse response to white so that it's making the most of available light, and set the ambient color to white. There we go, so they're now lit. And then we're going to render options, premium effects, true ambience. I'll turn the raise per pixel down, scattering correction, boost light, and maximum ray depth of 4 and then give that a render. You can see that there's not very much light being generated by these even though they're glowing white. Even if I take the material, so I take the cube material and the plane material which are in default grey, I'll make them fully white. Try and capture a bit more light. It's still not a great deal of light. And uh, these don't look like they're glowing really, they just look look white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the ambience for now, so there's no light source in this scene, and I'm going to go into the Skylab, I'm going to use a HDRI image, open Treppenhall 2, uh, 1280 pixel diameter light probe, one of Horos. I'm going to set the intensity up so we can see what it looks like, that's what it looks like. The quality down, specularity down, I'm going to use render in scene, but there's nothing nothing visible at the moment and uh, this is because I'll turn this up a bit more there we go you can see something's going on but bear in mind that its default setting true ambience optimization is set so if I render now there's loads of light and not light on the bits that I want and under true ambience optimization we've got the influence controls here mm. uh, and lots of things to be influenced uh, which is a bit awkward so what I'm going to do to make life easier is group all the separate bits together. Now you can't use uh, influence, control influence by group, you, but you can exclude things that aren't in the group. So if I exclude the cube and then I exclude the plane, that's effectively the same as including the group of objects. But because of a bug in Bryce and the influence control, you can't select groups and it. Uh, we can select it but it doesn't obey it. So now I have excluded everything except these little faceted chips. Uh, but you can see in true ambience optimization it just doesn't obey that. So what we need to do is turn true ambience optimization off and then when, uh, when it's rendered you can see that these now are receiving light. Now the render is going a little bit slow uh, and obviously the combination of direct lighting and true ambience lighting uh, it slows things down but we can turn cast shadows off and that's going to improve things for us and it's not really going to modify the effect in any way uh, these still look a bit faceted but uh, we can take advantage of the smoothing options here so if I set it to smooth and oh, I don't want to need this control to come up here we go it's probably Camtasia that was uh, fooling me there set it up at 180 degrees it'll attempt to smooth these flat surfaces which will give them a, a pleasing shaded effect across them which makes them look more glowy so that's uh, that's created a good glowing illusion there but still not much light if I have ambient light into that because there are some now dark areas thanks to the shading uh, so I'm going to make the ambient light uh, blue so that uh, it, it co corresponds or complements the light coming from the HDR, then we've got a bit more light in this scene, but because the, these are so far set into the surface, they're not lighting the outside of this cube. And now, to light, to put something on the outside of this cube, we could add the HDRI to the black sky, and then we'd have, ah, another problem. 
the uh, Trambians is picking up the image of the HDRI sky. So we'd have to block that off and we'll create a special light here, gel light. So it's just an ordinary radial light but we make it true ambience optimized. Use gel. Uh, set the influence to include background only. That stops interference from other effects within this uh, gel. Reset the material and take the diffuse down to zero. So that's like a Trambian's firewall that uh, prevents light from the backdrop getting in and interfering with what we're doing here. So now you can see we've uh, we've managed to exclude all the all the trambians coming from the backdrop but it's still quite dark. But now we've got the backdrop in place, I can modify the cube material and give it a little bit of reflection. So that in turn will give us a bit of definition on the outside of this cube, but it's still quite dark down here. So here's a trick. If we go back to the radial light that's this uh, black, invisible black disc, you can see through it with direct light but trambians can't get through it, and modify its properties to be reflective. And this is going to interact with the trambians effect now and reflect light back in onto the model. And we can use that to focus light into this area. So I'll just shrink it down a bit. Bear in mind that it's now acting as a mirror, focusing light from the model back onto the outside of the model. Now the drawback with this is it can form an image on the ground that you don't want because the light wants to be diffuse. So we'll, we'll box clever here and set the specular halo down to about 100. Now the reason for doing that, we're just worried about the luminance value actually that I'll do it in each channel, so you can do it through there and just set it, uh, is that, that when you incorporate premium effect blurred reflections, that one there, means that they gathering process are now incorporated with the reflecting process that's slightly blurred will prevent any strong images of this object appearing on the ground plane there. So you can see it's quite noisy but because we don't have any direct lighting except from the HDRI backdrop and that's not casting a shadow because remember we turned the cast shadows off it's fairly render efficient so we're going to render options you can see I've already selected a fairly small image, it's only 500 pixels by 500 pixels. It should render in a reasonable time scale even at a fairly high resolution. So that's saying 21 minutes. Now um, you need the highest setting to try and eliminate the noise that's uh, going to be produced. So that's that's why I've chosen a high setting. But as you can see it's, it's getting on with the job and if I, uh, if I pause the video now I'll be able to have a look at the finished result and you can see if you think that it's been a fairly effective method. As you can see the render's almost complete. Uh, I suppose I should point out I did place a small amount of reflection on this material but I didn't consider what value the specular halo was set to which uh, explains why this now looks uh, has got a, a dull finish instead of a sharp reflection of the background. So if I wanted a sharp reflection of the background from this material then I would have to set the specular halo in that material down to black. If I wanted a very diffuse, and this is sort of in between at the moment, but if I wanted a very diffuse reflection then I could set it right up. And in, in some respects having a very diffuse reflection is, is very close to simulating uh, the, the effect of the trambians. Only that because it's a reflection and not a light gathering process then it will still generate images, although the they'll be very diffuse images, they will still appear, so this is why uh, Trambians is, is superior, particularly in the form but uh, with the scattering correction uh, it's uh, made it a very good light simulation method. So there you go, that's the final render. I hope that was an interesting tutorial for those who want to really tackle this advanced topic. And of course there's, there's other things that can be done with having sort of these invisible mirrors and invisible light blockers so you can incorporate dif diffuse lighting and true ambience lighting and at the same time keep them separate by using these uh, uh, lights but with a gel property that uh, interacts with the true ambience effect so it's, uh, it could create some very advanced lighting environments obviously some thought has to be applied to that right anyway that's the end of the tutorial